Hi friends! Critical Role has homebrewed quite a bit of different subclasses, rules, and spells. Things like Blood Hunter or Dudomancy and Chronomancy, the Empathy Domain. But the one thing that Matt Mercer and team created that impresses me the most has to be the Barbarian subclass that they created for Talos and Jaffe's character, Ashton. So today we're going to break down the abilities that that class can do so you can create your own character with these abilities at home. Because as of yet, this has not been published in any kind of book. All these abilities have been tracked down by critters or just regular fans who want to know what these classes do and have been categorized as such. If you wanted to know more about FCG subclass that Sam plays, I also made a video about that too. If you wanted to click that right there, we'll take you straight to it. But today, let's talk about the path of fundamental chaos. There isn't like a really huge cool backstory behind it, unfortunately. Talison wanted to play a character that was chaotic and random, and when he saw the new wild magic barbarian that came with Tasha's, he thought that it wasn't random enough because at higher levels, you actually get to control some of the outcomes. He wanted no control. So they got together and created a Chaos Barbarian that instead of using Feywild, they went more primordial, more dunamantic. So off the bat at level three, you do know how to speak and write primordial as one of your languages, which is very fun and helpful, but you also unlock the Chaos Burst. The Chaos Burst is a charge you're gonna be using for most of your abilities. Right now, you can just use one of those charges to do additional damage dice so when you hit a creature. You can use it as many times as your proficient modifier bonus gives you. You get two additional dice to add on to the damage starting at level three, and it's just 2d4. When you get to a higher level, it does become 2d6. Now, the damage type that this additional burst does is randomized. Much like the Chaos Bolt spell, the total extra damage that you do will be then be listed on a chart, and then that damage type will then be chosen that way. And you'll keep this chart around for any other kind of randomized damage that you'll do with any of the other abilities. So you never really know what element you're going to be adding on. I think that's a fun touch. Continuing with the randomness, once you go into a rage, your rage now becomes the fundamental force. Once you enter it with your bonus action, you have to roll a d4, and the type of rage will be determined by what number you roll. And there are four different categories that you can get here. Each one will have different abilities based on what one they are, and the higher levels you go, the more different abilities will add on that will be personalized to that type. Number one the dice is time, number two is space, number three is gravity, and number four is potential. At level three, if you roll time, you then get temporal molasses. Hostile creatures 15 away from you while you are raging have to make a constitution saving throw against your save. By the way, all these saves that will be done, you'll be using your constitution as a modifier. So the higher your con is, the more fucked up everyone else gets. Anyway, if they fail that con save and they're 15 feet away from you, their speed is halved and they cannot take reactions. Number two is space gets us violent getaway. If you reduce a creature's HP to zero, you then can use your reaction to teleport 60 feet in any direction that you choose. With number three, you are gravity unlocking orbital decay. Everyone, and I mean everyone and everything 15 away from you is now magnetically charged to be pulled towards you. At the start of every turn, everything is yanked 10 feet towards the barbarian. All attacks on different creatures other than the barbarian will have disadvantage, and any movement meant to be in the opposite direction where the barbarian is will be lowered by 10 feet. Pretty OP, actually. Pretty OP. And with the four on the dice, we get potential unlocking probable matrix. Every ally 10 feet away from the barbarian while he is raging gets to add a d4 to attack rolls and saving throws. So it's kind of like bless, which is pretty solid when you think about how it's not bless. So someone could still bless you and you can have two d4s on all your attack rolls and saving throws. All these different types of rages are so much fun. I have a hard time playing barbarians because it's just so hit stuff and then move on. Each one of these stages that you get a new ability comes with four different abilities. And the way to mitigate it from being too overpowered is you don't get to pick what one you get. You just have to be lucky, but none of them suck. So you're never, you know, screwed. We're only at level three. Like this is already a really fun class that I am going to be playing, especially on Baldur's Gate 3. I found someone who did a mod for it. Very excited about that. Anyway, continuing on at level six, we get fundamental force enhanced. Now, when we are in our rage, depending on which type we're in, we can spend a chaos burst to then do a different ability. One that reflects time, gravity, space, potential, all that fun stuff. One on the dice, we're back to time and we get hyper rage, which is just about the nerdiest thing I think a D&D thing can be titled, which is why I love it so much. If you use a chaos burst, your movement speed is 
doubled, you get an additional attack with your bonus action and you can use disengage with your bonus action as well. Now it's unclear if this is just the one turn that you use your chaos burst or if for the remainder of your rage, you now can attack again with your bonus action and your speed is doubled throughout the whole thing. I think not, but anyway, with two on the dice, we're back to space and now we get the best ability, I personally think so, and that would be wormhole strike. With wormhole strike, you basically get to play portal and open up two different wormholes next to each other one by you one by the person you don't like very much when you do this you get to take your attacks through the portal through the rest of your turn and you get to add additional d6 to that attack now these portals can be 60 feet apart from each other that's very cool unfortunately they're only big enough for you to attack through but basically turns your maul or big ass sword into a ranged weapon with three on the dice we're back to gravity and now we have gravity well triggering this with the chaos burst means that your barbarian cannot be moved and cannot be knocked prone and when your barbarian makes a melee attack against somebody they have to make a strength check or they're also knocked prone and with four on the dice we're back to potential with dreadful misfortune and this is just very funny i feel like this ability is a bit of a lull but when a creature misses attack on the barbarian the barbarian can use its reaction to make them re-roll the attack against themselves so they have to make a new attack and if they beat their own AC they hit themselves <laughs> now the creature only takes half the damage from this attack but it's still very funny and very fun I like it very very much downside is, is they're only taking half of their damage they're not taking any of your chaos burst damage but it only takes a reaction from you so pretty cool trade-off and at level 10 we get a new ability that doesn't use our chaos burst we get something called erratic defense and this is triggered once you are hit when you're hit and you choose to trigger it you're now resistant to all types of damage and you get a special fun additional fuck you to the guy who hit you depending on what kind of rage you're in if you're in a time rage the creature is now affected by virtually the spell slow all the effects of slow but it's not a spell they're back to normal at the end of their next turn with space you get to choose a point 30 feet away from you and then have the creature that hit you teleported over there with gravity the creature that hit you is now shunted from you in a 30 foot direction the opposite that you are with a potential type rage we get something called tethered potential this creates a magical connection between you and your attacker this tether stays between you while you're raging or if either one of you gets to zero hp while this tether is active any damage you take they also take any damage you heal they also heal and vice versa and that's about all we know so far uh the bell's hells are not level 14 so we have no idea what the next ability is but i am very stoked and there are tons of people wildly guessing what it is i'll put a link below in the description to someone who i think got the closest to what it could be just in case you wanted to play a higher level of this but like isn't this incredibly fun this totally changes the expected path a barbarian usually takes Sure, it's still, you know, get mad and hit shit. We love that. We love a good temper tantrum. But it's more than that. It's dynamic. It keeps you excited. It keeps you guessing. And there are options. I love options. Anytime there is a subclass that gets me choosing which branch I want to take down it, I'm so excited for it. Usually I like to talk about multi-classing options. It's kind of like my thing but it's almost hard for this class because my first instinct is to barrel through it as fast as I can so I can get more of its abilities. That being said, this barbarian is so dynamically moving and dynamically charged that all of its reaction, its movement, its bonus action, they're all in use. Most of the time when I take a good multi-class, it's to fill in a hole. A good powerful character is using their their action their reaction their movement all of everything they can do at once certain classes don't give you a lot of one wizards don't get a lot of bonus actions but this one uses everything a lot so when i multi-class with it i want to use something that comes with passive abilities to augment what i have or things that i can add on top for freezies paladin's a good choice because divine smite is not a spell your stats might be spread a little too thin ish if you want to use charisma for the other spells divine smite doesn't need a save though so you don't have to worry too much about charisma but being able to slap 2d6 2d8 on top of your 2d6 sword is pretty cool i like that idea 
Paladin would be a good choice. Fighter is also a really good choice. I mean, Fighter is a great choice for any class, but specifically Battlemaster, being able to use your maneuvers through a wormhole strike sounds very fun. Getting a tripping attack in or a pushing attack. A lot of people maneuver themselves close to edges when there's no one around to push them. So if you're 60 feet away, you can just knock that guy out. Rogues and Barbarians make really good subclasses. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think this is a good scenario. None of its abilities helps you get advantage, so that'd be difficult to sneak attack with. Tempest Cleric is also a cool idea. A lot of these abilities really focus on you being the center point of getting hit. I mean, gravity well, make sure that you're the only one that they even can hit. I mean, it's pulling gravity towards you. So if you have Tempest Cleric dip in it, you could be damaging them with electricity or thunder with your reaction while you're fighting. But again, that's a bit of a tough one because you'd have to spare around some stuff for wisdom. But hey, I hope you enjoyed my video. I really love doing these subclasses. It's kind of the, my favorite videos to make. So much though that I wanted to start making my own subclasses. So I'm starting a new series, not really a series. It's just more subclasses except for I made them. And I'm going to be talking about deities first, deities that got brought up in Baldur's Gate 3 and we didn't hear too much about them. So we're gonna go into some lore stuff about Shares first. And then I'm gonna create a specific domain for a cleric for Shares that someone could play. And I've got it written down right now and it's it's pretty decent. I like it. We're gonna do some some test plays with it. So I hope you guys like it. But first I really want to thank all my sponsors especially those guys right there. Anybody who subscribes to the YouTube memberships, adventure tier or higher, get put in the ending credits. And they also get put into a raffle that pulls every Sunday. This Sunday, we're raffling off one of my brand new activewear shorts. They're my favorite things to wear on the planet. And I'm just saying that because I am selling them. Oh, speaking of our raffle next Sunday, last Sunday, our winner was Jake Geller. Congratulations, Jake. I hope you like them. They're really dope. I will see you guys later. Goodbye. Love you.